As a tenant rep, there are really two key ways that you could use Ascendix RE. The first part would be for prospecting prospective tenants and being able to follow up with them on a certain uh, cadence, whether that's weekly, quarterly, et cetera. And then there is the second half, which is managing the ongoing tenant rep deals that you have, which may include um, tracking the various properties that you are visiting with that tenant up until that deal is closed and the tenant finds their uh, property and suite that they are moving into, and then eventually managing uh, leases and when they expire and option notices and renewal dates and whatnot. The first portion of this video will cover how to best prospect within Ascendix. Um, there are multiple ways to go about that. When we think about prospecting, although you may be calling on individuals, you're also calling on companies since uh, the commercial state does focus on businesses. So in this example, I happen to be on an account record, which is synonymous with company for a 24 hour fitness as an example. And uh, there are certain ways that you could go about tagging this account record. Number one, um, with a type of prospect. So your options may differ, but there's always a way for you to customize what that looks like. And so in this case, prospect seems to be fitting. And the reason why you would want to tag them is because once you are creating segmented lists of your accounts, you could group all of your prospects into one list and be able to um, call on them easier and whatnot. The second part of um, dealing with the activity with the account record is to log the activities that you have for this prospect. So if you want to schedule um, a call in the future or an appointment or you've sent an email or you want to make some sort of reminder for yourself in the future, let's say um, call to follow up, you can either do those manually or you could set up some sort of workflow that says, um, you know, you need to follow up uh, with that company or with a specific person at that company so that you know um, on that designated date you need to follow up with them. There are various ways around this. Again, it could be automated in, in the way that you can um, set a uh, frequent follow-up once a month, etc. so you don't have to manually schedule it the way I did. But that's one, one way to go about it. Um, another way to go about it is you may say, well, we've spoken with someone and they've provided us some information about when their current lease expires, what they're looking for as far as either renewal or um, finding brand new space. And so to the right of the record are a bunch of related um, lists, if you will. And so preferences is really where you can go to capture that leasing criteria. Um, you can put in rent min and max if the person is sharing that and some space um, requirements. And I think that will help you keep track, uh, not just of prospects you're pursuing, but of when they're um, possibly looking to move in or when their lease expires and the space and budget criteria. So again, um, the three things I've covered were the type as a prospect, scheduling the activities, and logging a preference, which will be additional detail about that particular 24-hour fitness or that particular company. Obviously, you can add multiple contacts at the company. So if it was one person, Chuck, you were pursuing, you could really do the same thing. The record here will be more focused on um, the person versus the business, uh, but you could still tag them as a type you can still add activities to them and you could still add preferences to them. So the same concept applies. The nice thing about adding them to a contact is that anything you add to a contact will roll up to the company record. So if I logged a call with Chuck today and that call was potentially a voicemail um, and it, saved on, it saves on his record, when I go to the 24 hour fitness record, I'll be able to see that same call with Chuck uh, because Chuck is connected or associated to that company. So that's how you go about um, tagging your accounts, both as prospects, managing the activities, logging when they expire and their leasing criteria. When you go back to the general accounts tab, you can create a segmented list of prospects. Um, this is nothing more than a filter that says basically show me all accounts whose type uh, equals prospect. And at this case, you see 24 hours uh, is there. 
because the type is prospect, but there's also a column that shows you last activity. And this is helpful because this allows you to see who is stale and who is not, who have you contacted recently and who has not been touched in a while. And it may be a good reminder for you to go back and follow up with said companies. Uh, the way that you can get this list is if you see this gear icon here, um, you might be able to, first of all, determine that um, what columns you want to display. So these are the columns that we already see in the background and these are all of the possible ones. And so uh, that's one way you could customize your experience. The other thing you could do obviously um, to set the filter, the filter that you're doing here is type equals prospect. Of course, you can be more uh, detailed if you wanted prospects only in a certain state or prospects only in a certain industry, you could continuously add filters if you really wanted a finite list. Now let's say um, in this example of 24 hour fitness, um, our outreach attempts have been successful and they have decided to sign an LOI with you. They want you to represent them in finding space. At that point, which we would call naturally the tipping point where the relationship should now exit you logging everything on an account or contact level is to create a deal. And again, on the right section here, you'll notice that there is um, deals. And so if you were to commence a new deal, you're going to get a prompt to ask you what kind of deal would you like to commence? And in this case, it would be a tenant rep deal. The goal of the deal here is the transactional element whereby you can track stages um, and types, right? So what kind of structure, what kind of deal is it? Um, and although you may not know the property right away, your client is 24 hour fitness, your client contact may be Chuck. Um, you may want to designate what the role of that client is. If you are in the commercial state, also doing investments, buyer rep and seller rep, your client roles may vary throughout. And we might want to call this just 24 hour Dallas deal, just to give it a, the name, what you name a record is really a personal decision at that, at that rate. Um, of course, if you don't know the property yet, you won't know who the listing broker or owner is, but as you discover what property they're going to end up in. Eventually, you might want to populate that if you care to track that information. And if you want to track for whatever reason how you got that business or relationship came to be, you can always uh, track that as well. I'll save the record before I add any financial information. Once it saves, you're sort of back at the account record. You could always hover over and see that there's that deal and then just click into the actual deal itself. So in theory, depending on how long your life cycles are from open to close, this deal may just really be open for quite some time, six months, nine months, however long it takes you to get that tenant in that place, depending on uh, their timeline to move and what the experience is with the properties that they are looking at. Uh, similar to the account record where you, you had the fields on the left and then the related records to the right, you do have an area here called prospective properties. You would use this if you were really wanting to granular, in a granular fashion, track all of the various properties this tenant was shopping. Um, the only sort of caveat to this is that it implies that you would have created the property record within Ascendix already. So if you're in the habit of adding your market properties, by all means, you could do that. So notice that it's red, it's required. This is going to assume that you've already added a property, um, just a regular property. You don't have to have a listing for it. It's just a market property. All you really need there is a, is a name or a type, or rather a name and a type, office, retail, et cetera. Um, but also the goal of this is to track, you know, either their rating, uh, uh, the tent prospective tenants rating of that space within that property, uh, the status, the stage, et cetera, or potentially when it's excluded from that deal, if it's primary and any color commentary notes. Again, it's not required that you use this, but if you wanted to keep track of everything that they have seen uh, within the properties and the spaces within those properties, which is what availability is, you could always do that. If that seems uh, like too much work or uh, not necessarily required for what you need and you're doing uh, much of this work offline, i.e. outside of uh, being in front of a Sendex, obviously, eventually you'll come to terms with the fact that uh, this tenant will, uh, you know, potentially inhabit space in uh, Brookhaven Village, which is retail. 
uh, property for the most part for the purposes of this example. Um, when we get to the financial forecasting, some of this, um, you know, may change along the way. So if you know that the negotiation is a triple net lease and the occupied square footage will be 6,000 square feet with a commencing rate, we say commencing because we know that there's a, a possibility throughout the dur duration of the lease it will be bumped um, via percent or flat amounts. Just put in 50. Um, and then again, these could be... Um, rough estimates up until you have an exact of when the contracts are executed or at least um, presented. And so we've got a, just a four-year lease here um, and some of the fields that you'll notice on here might auto calculate after I save. I'll just go ahead and save anyway and see where that brings us. Um, what has auto calculated here is the rent per month based on the input of the size and the initial rate and also the overall lease term. The other thing that you can do is once you've determined um, what that you know lease structure will look like, the gross deal value that will drive the overall value of really the commissions if you're using that feature is what's the what's the total rent for the entire period. So as an example, if we put that the overall value of that deal was 1.4 million and perhaps um, the commission is 3%, you'll notice after I save the um, commissions auto calculate as well. All of these numbers are the same because um, we've not reduced this 3% by any further. This assumes this is a um, broker fee. You can, if you're subscribed to the commissions feature, also break it down per agents, um, internal, external expenses, marketing, and et cetera. So just something to keep in mind there. Of course, you could always put a probability and estimated close date if you're looking to um, be able to forecast your deals. So um, clicking on the deals tab, again, uh, in this case, you might be on, in multiple um, areas within commercial real estate or exclusively tenant rep deals, in which case you might want to have a view that shows you all of your deals regardless of who you're representing. You could also be creative with how this displays in that you can display it as what we call Kanban, which is a more visual aspect of your deals. Um, here, what you're seeing is a total of the fee that, you're, that your company is getting. So it really just depends on the settings. So if we take a look at the settings, that's actually the gross deal value. So the fee would be the commission that I was alluding to earlier. And that Those numbers should change accordingly. Um, basically, this effectively shows you the deals you've got in the pipeline and the totals per that area. So if you've got 948 in LOI, and um, you want to, there's that 24 hour um, deal we were working on for 24 hour fitness. You can move it to, um, you know, touring as an example, and the totals change, or you can move it to lease execution and the totals change. So that actually would be the same as going into the deal record and changing the stage um, from one value to another. It's the same thing that drag and drop. The other thing you could obviously do is add activities or tasks if you've got some due diligence and things to follow up um, on instead of connecting them to um, the company 24-hour fitness, you may want to connect them to the deal. And in most cases, if you are a new client or on a trial um, or even an older client, really deals tend to be private. So the whole system is open outside of deals. This is perceived to be um, private transactional info. If your team is collaborative, we can open this up so that um, you're able to collaborate on deals together. But for the most part, it's private. And so eventually, um, you'll want to close this deal, even, you know, it's open and it's, it's a done deal in the real world. Um, depending on if you've got the commissions feature or not, if you are subscribed to commissions, which falls under our enterprise product, you will have to add that commission. Um, if you're not subscribed to it, you could skip right to this uh, option called deal close. And so um, in this example, I'm just going to quickly add a commission for an inside broker. And so you can, um, not necessarily for training purposes here, just to illustrate that you can decide about house splits and agent splits and whatnot. 
That would be part of the requirement if you did subscribe to deals. And so it takes that original 42,000 and it breaks it down to the commission to the company versus to the agent. In this case, it'd be Victoria, who's getting that um, net balance of the 70% with her, with her split with house. Um, in any case, back to the deal here, um, you'll notice that now that I've added the commission, it's visible as to you know who, who it's going to and how much they're getting. And now we're ready to close the deal. And the nice thing about closing the deal outside of it just not remaining in your open pipeline is that it takes a lot of the information you've already been collecting on the deal and creates that lease comp for you so that you don't have to then double enter that information into the lease table or the leases tab. So um, if we just you know put in some last minute info and again it's porting over all of the info I would have originally entered on the deal. If you would have changed that info and you close the deal it will update accordingly. And you notice here the create lease record is there. If for whatever reason, unfortunately, this deal was lost towards the end, you could always close it as lost so that it does not create a lease record. And we'll save. And once we do that, it will literally jump to the leases tab and it will transport or map over all of the information from the deal. You can see it says originating deal, but we're on a lease for unit 200 for that property, for that tenant in that space with that contact and basically as much data as possible moved over from the deal into the lease. And now you're literally looking at a lease comp uh, or just one of your own leases that you've closed, in which case um, when we click on the leases tab, you could um, get pretty creative with all the leases that you see, whether it's every single lease, expired ones, future ones, or those that have an upcoming expiration of 18 months. So if we go back full circle to the account called 24 hour fitness, we'll notice a few things. Um, obviously outside of all of the historical um, activities you would have had with the company or the account, we see that we've had that deal with them. That was the deal we were working on. And we also see that they've got now a lease, the lease that we've just closed. And so if uh, for whatever reason, obviously this is a national customer and you knew that they occupied another location, but you were not the tenant rep for that, nothing would technically stop you from creating a new lease record. Of course, in this case, you may not have all of the deep details about that lease if you were not the rep, but again, it would imply that you at minimum knew the property and some information about it. So the leases um, tab here can be dual purpose used for both those uh, deals you've closed and any market comps that you may want to add in. Um, the way that you distinguish in theory or in general, the way you distinguish between those that are yours versus market ones is who is the tenant rep broker. So if you populate your brokerage name and your name as the, as the agent effectively, that's how you're able to separate um, the market ones from your own. So hopefully that was a pretty good overview of how you could manage prospecting on the account or contact level, um, when to move it over to a deal to eventually close it into a lease and then keep track of lease expirations.